Hey guys, my name is Sam. I work for Cisco Tech. As you may already know, ICE 2.0 is finally out and with it comes support for TAC Plus or TACAX. In this video, I'll cover how to integrate TACAX with a wireless LAN controller. Please check our YouTube page for other videos on how to integrate ICE with iOS, NXOS, or even a rundown on command authorization with TACAX. That being said, let's go ahead and double check to make sure our nodes have the right license level. If you jump to administration system licensing, uh, we're going to look for a device admin license. It's an uncounted license but it has to be there otherwise you won't see this work centers device administration tab uh, so assuming we have that we're going to go ahead and jump over to deployment where we're going to turn on the TACAC server on our policy node um, unlike the session services which is just for radius device admin is just for TACAX so check the box save the button uh, doing this does not force a restart uh, not service impacting so go wild uh, next we'll jump to our results Really, there's two kinds of profiles that we want to pass back for controllers. One's everything, so we'll call it WLC all, and we'll create this one with raw view because I like it better. Role one equals all. Uh, role one is the mandatory attribute that controllers need to be able to determine what level of access this particular user is supposed to have. They normally do it by just looking at the tabs on the top. So if we're passing back a role one attribute of all, then the user is able to manage and control all of these tabs. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll just submit this. Uh, the next kind is a limited role, um, maybe help desk or something. Um, we'll use the custom attributes for this instead. I clicked on add on custom attributes followed by making a mandatory attribute for role one and the value will be uh, just the name of the tag that name of the tab that this particular user has access to. So we'll just use, use monitor for this example. They'll still be able to access other tabs, but they won't be able to make any changes. So now that we have our two shell profiles, I'll go ahead and show you my quick user's guide. I have a user WLC admin who belongs to NetOps and WLC user who belongs to Help Desk. My rules should say NetOps gets full access, Help Desk gets limited access. So we'll go ahead and replicate that in our policy set section. Uh, we're going to create a new policy set because it's good to separate out different kinds of sequences for different kinds of devices. We'll create a new policy set name, we'll just call it WLC and the condition will be as long as my network device X as long as my device device type is a WLC. Um, in my case I'm just checking on internal users so I'll update this to be internal users and then finally I should have two rules one for my admins WLC admin and we're gonna match on the NetOps internal user group and we'll pass back our WLC all profile and one for my help desk users WLC help desk pass back our WLC help desk shell profile. Submit. Uh, also, we need to add our controller. So we're going to k WLC, my address for the controller. Uh, my device type is a WLC. And I just need to check the TACAX box and enabled a shared secret. Shared secret just has to match doesn't matter what you make it. Now that that's all set, we should be good from the ice front. Let's go ahead and jump over to the controller. It's a good idea to start off at the management page and make sure you have a local admin user in case your TACAC server goes down. So that way you still have a way to jump into your controller after uh, in case something terrible does happen. Um, under security, we can go ahead and define our TACAC server. You want to put in your policy server that has that device admin service or role enabled. We need to put it in twice, once for authentication and once for authorization. I copy this so my life's easier. The authentication just checks on the credentials. The authorization just asks what is this user allowed to do because um, that's how TACAX is split up. You can have multiple policy servers in here. Just make sure that whatever order of listing you use in authentication, you use the same order for authorization. So that way all the servers are lined up back to back. Um, 
Now, finally, we jump to the priority order and we tell the controller that we want to use TACX first and local user second, uh, or local user first. It's really up to your, your security policies or preferences. Now that everything's in place, I should be able to go ahead and say log out. We'll log in with our WLC admin user. Oh, just hit enter. All right, this user can do whatever he wants. He can go to WLANs and we'll disable the WLAN just for giggles. No one's on it, it's not production. All done, cool. Let's try and use our WLC user, which is our help desk user, to make sure he can't do the same stuff and essentially prove that the two profiles are working. Cool, let's go back to WLANs. Let's go to one and let's try and enable this. I should get an authorization error. Yep, no sufficient privileges, perfect. If we jump over to ICE, we can check from the operations, TACAX live logs, exactly what went down. So we can see we have a WLC admin authentication where we check the credentials and it was valid, so we sent back access accept. And then there's a second authorization question that says, what level of access does this user have? And we pass back the WLC admin role, which was the role one equals all. Same with the WLC user, we validated the password was successful. And then we pass back WC help desk instead of WC admin. We can always click on the details to get more information behind what happened. Um, we should be able to see in the side role one monitor. Um, so that user should only get access to touch whatever's in the monitor tab anyways. And that about covers it for the controller and ICE integration with TACAX. Um, like I said earlier, there should be other videos on our YouTube page right now to how to configure iOS, how to configure NXOS, and how to do some basic command authorization. Um, that being said, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please go ahead and click subscribe.